Good morning and greetings from the team here at Antibiotics. Thanks for joining us virtually, and I hope you all are enjoying the new pants optional reality of the working world today. I'm Eric Banghart, Manager of Global Sales here at Innovonics, and welcome to the kickoff edition of our weekly cup series. During this series in the coming weeks, we hope to elevate your wireless expertise, share some unique ways you can utilize commercial grade wireless products in your projects and installations, and with a little luck, we hope to, that the information we share can help expand your reach with existing and new customers to sustain and maybe even land some new business in these challenging times. We'll also introduce you to some of our partners who integrate with our wireless sensor network and transmitter portfolio in some very innovative ways. In general, these will be brief presentations on a wide variety of subjects from members of the Innovonics team or guest speakers, followed by some Q&A. Please feel free to send in questions throughout the presentation and after by using the chat button in the upper right hand corner and we'll do our best to answer all questions or have your territory sales manager circle back with you. We're also interested in your feedback or suggestions for future topics, so please feel free to drop us an email or forward your ideas through chat. To kick off the series this week, our presenter is Sandy Fisher from the Innovonic sales team. Sandy has a vast knowledge of our products and the security industry in general from his 20 plus years at Innovonics and is a certified and active PSP. Sandy lives in Boulder, Colorado and covers the Rocky Mountain territory stretching into Canada. Sandy will be speaking on the changing landscape of security installations. Once again, thanks for attending. Please grab a refill of your favorite morning beverage. Hey, it's five o'clock somewhere. And let's get started. With no further ado, Sandy, take it away. Good morning, everybody. And just checking in with Nikki, our producer. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you and I see your presentation. OK, well, we're very glad you're all with us. Let's go ahead and begin today. We're going to talk about the changing landscape of security system installations. I'll give you my opinion of some upcoming trends in the market for the security industry and how we can adapt to meet the challenges of these trends. I'll also summarize Innovonics connectivity with various physical security platforms. I encourage you to reach out to your Innovonics rep for help with system design. Before we begin, I hope you're all doing well and hopefully you are transitioning toward resuming business activities in a more normal fashion. I can tell you that the Innovonics office has reopened with some restrictions in place. Now, many of us at Innovonics are still working from home, including myself, and those that are coming into the office are observing safety procedures. And this is a trend that I will be discussing in just a bit. Okay, and let me advance. Advance. Sometimes it gets stuck. Okay, here we are. OK. Times have changed for businesses in every vertical market, healthcare, education, retail, government, every commercial and industrial space. We are uh, we, we will be in this pandemic for another year, I believe, until we have a vaccine. As a result, I really think we're going to see a stark seasonality to conducting business when it comes to meeting with customers in the field or at their locations, especially for installations and service. You can call it on off, feast or famine. I see it as a window of opportunity. I believe we will be able to conduct our business activities face to face for the most part for about six months, June through November. And then I believe more restrictions will be back in place for the beginning of 2021. Like I said, I really think we'll have one more cycle of this, but this is temporary. With so many people working from home, we're going to see fewer employees in the offices of our commercial customers, as well as restricted access of visitors in those commercial job sites. It makes sense that we'll see increased demand for intrusion detection, perimeter detection, and duress alarm signaling for loan workers. Never before has the inherent benefit of fast installation of wireless technology been more relevant. We're going to want to get in and get out as quickly as possible. 
Now, in Avonics, wireless is for alarms, for intrusion and duress, but let's also touch on access control, video, and even a little commercial fire. First, for intrusion systems, look at the time it takes to run wire to the various doors, motions, and glass breaks. Going wireless for those points will save many hours of time on site, as, and as we often see, there will be cost savings as well. I think controlled openings in access control will still be mostly wired, but let's look at the uncontrolled openings, side doors, back doors, basically a door position switch. Very fast and easy to go wireless on those. Use a transmitter at each of these doors and a relay output receiver in the equipment room where the door controllers are and utilize those spare controller inputs. That will save you a lot of time. From there, the access control system will monitor those doors and provide an alert of a prop door. For video, you may be looking to use existing network infrastructure for IP cameras to reduce installation time and then implementing quality of service and other IP measures so that IP video can coexist with other office functionality on the same network. For commercial fire, mostly wired as well, but think about the one or two endpoints that take a long time to wire. There's an Innovonics wireless option, UL864 listed for that scenario as well. Also, I think installers will be wearing masks. I know that when I get back on the road to visit customers, it can't happen soon enough, but I want them to know that I will help ensure their health and safety by showing up with a mask on. For fun today, look at the mask I have pictured here in the lower right. Now our masks certainly won't be this extreme, but see if you can guess whose mask this is. Type your answer into the Q&A box in this meeting, and at the end, I'll tell you who it is. And for extra credit, see if you can identify the installer pictured to the left of the mask. Who is that guy? As commercial entities reopen, they will want to operate more efficiently than ever. So system integration and compatibility between systems is crucial. Innovonics is a significant part of reaching that goal with more security system interfaces available than ever before. For alarm panels, we connect directly to Honeywell, Bosch, Paycom, and the Flex panels, Flex, Flex, I, FlexiBase and FlexIP for you Stanley and Sonatrol people out there today. For access control, we integrate with ICT Protege, Maxis, Open Options, and RS2. Think about those uncontrolled openings that I mentioned. <laughs> for video, we integrate with Milestone and Genetech. The Milestone integration is with a bridge to Expertech software called BTX, and the Genetech software is with our new BACnet over IP gateway. Think about motion triggered video in challenging scenes. Like at night when the camera's automatic game control turns on, that introduces a lot of noise into the picture and that can be misinterpreted as, as motion or uh, outdoors or at a distance. Uh, when the camera's onboard video motion detection yields lots of useless footage in these instances, using a wireless motion detector instead with the receiver going right into the camera's alarm input will make motion triggered video much more meaningful. And here's another great application. Put our wireless build trap in a cache door programmed into a receiver connected to the alarm input of a camera looking at that cache handling station. This will provide a fast and easy duress alarm video of the cashier. In both cases, this could initiate an increase in frame rate and resolution of the alarm event, as well as logging it in the video management audit trail. We can even connect to many building management platforms with open BACnet protocol. And we have our add-on receivers that connect to anything else by connecting relay outputs to zone inputs. Much of the configuration process can be accomplished in your shop before arriving on site for installation, including the registration of transmitters into the receivers or alarm panel. On the sensor side of a project, in addition to our own sensors, we are integrated with Optex for robust motion sensors. Think about perimeter monitoring, and you can install a perimeter of line detection in record time with Optex I-Series beams. 
Flare Electronics is another Innovonics sensor partner. They have some medical device monitors and a water sensor, along with a number of contacts and switches. And for commercial fire, we have a UL864 listed transmitter receiver pair that makes a valve or a switch, such as a PIV, become wireless. Just put the transmitter at the PIV and the receiver relays connect to zone inputs on any fire panel. Finally today, we have seen needs emerge for temporary facilities and even parking lot expansions. This uh, can be driven by space requirements or safety concerns. Wireless security technology lends itself very nicely to these scenarios. A sensor example uh, for a hospital application is a, a ventilator monitor made by Flare Electronics. It works with our universal transmitter and it will signal an alert if a ventilator needs attention. Uh, again, please reach out to your Innovonics account rep to discuss projects like these and any commercial project for that matter. We are ready to help you meet the challenges of new customer requirements. Short but sweet, right? Uh, next week, we'll have a more detailed presentation about Innovonics integrations and partners. Visit our website to view the entire upcoming series of Innovonics Weekly Cup topics. Now, before I pass it back to Eric, Nikki Williams, our producer here today and our director of marketing, has been monitoring your mask guesses. Nikki, do we have any uh, guesses for the mask? You know, I actually, I didn't get any guesses for the mask. I got a couple of questions, but no mask guesses. Okay, well, we'll get to the questions in one moment. The mask it belongs to the mountain from Game of Thrones, and that installer is none other than me. <laughs> okay, so. Right, great, well, let's go ahead and I'll, um, let me see, I'll just dive into the questions here for you, Sandy. Um, oh, actually, I'm sorry. We got one person who did guess that it was the mountain. <laughs> I just saw it come through. So oh, whoever guessed, it's under anonymous. You were right. <laughs> the mountain. Um, let's see. Okay. First question. Can I use Innovonics outdoors? Uh, we get that a lot. Um, if, well, our repeater has a uh, weatherproof enclosure made out of plastic that can go outdoors. That's probably the most typical. Any kind of a weatherproof class, uh, plastic enclosure for a transmitter will work, as well as all of the Optex I-Series units are also outdoor rated. Great. All right. Uh, my next question is, can Innovonics connect to DSC and DMP panels? Uh, the answer is yes. In the case of DSC, uh, you would use our um, uh, add-on receivers. I just got a question in email as well. Maybe I can get to that in a moment. Uh, you can use our add-on receivers and those will go to zone inputs on DSC. For DMP, um, if it's a newer panel like an XR550, uh, you're going to be in the same boat using our add-on receivers. If it's an XR500 or an XR200, one of those earlier XR panels, as long as you can get your hands on a DMP472 card, then you can use our direct interface, which would be our uh, EN7472 DMP. If that part number is gone, then it would be the EN7280. The only difference is a wire harness but that's how you can go directly into those slightly older DMP panels. Great. All right, next question. What is your typical wireless distance indoors? So indoors, in building and through building, uh, typically a couple hundred feet. Overall, I say in the hundreds of feet. In a hospital, you, you can go a couple hundred feet between repeaters. Uh, it's always best to use the survey kit to eliminate that guesswork, but if you're running up a bid before you can do that, I, I'd figure uh, at least a couple hundred feet per hop. Um, outdoors, I'll, I'll add a little bit more. If you're doing a perimeter and there's more open space, you can get uh, maybe a few or several hundred feet. Okay, great. Um, how many repeaters can I use on a large job? 
Uh, realistically, you can get up to 10 repeater hops. So that should be enough to cover any massive job site or premise, as long as you're not trying to go across town. There is one caveat for you Bosch dealers out there. If you're using our interface on the SDI2 bus, the EN kit SDI2, that does have a software um, uh, repeater limit of eight. So you, so you have to register the repeaters and you can use eight. If you need to have more than eight repeaters on a Bosch panel, use the older Zonex interface on the Zonex bus. That would be the EN kit uh, 01 from Bosch, and then there's no repeater limit there. All Let right. me take a look at this um, uh, email I got. Let me just see if it uh, if it's. I'd say, David, go ahead and get with uh, Bill Walker, your account rep, and um, and uh, we can get you uh, more information on that uh, flare ventilator monitor. All right, I've got one last question for you, Sandy, and I do want to give everybody a heads up. We have about a 30 second delay with the live stream. So if you have any more questions, if you could um, go ahead and type them in now, just so they come through while um, Sandy is answering this last question. Um, and your last question is, are there any panels that Innovonix can't connect to? I don't see how, because any panel is gonna have a zone input and our relay output receivers go into, uh, go into any kind of a zone input. So as long as there's a zone input, whether it's on board or via a zone expander, we should be able to go into anything, including things like door controllers, IO boards, um, dialer inputs, you name it. As long as there's zone inputs, um, typically a dry contact, but even a discrete input with a uh, minimal current draw should be just fine. Okay, great. All right, so I'm not seeing any more questions coming in right now. Again, we do have that slight delay, but um, but yeah, I, I think that may have answered everybody's questions. So I think I'm going to go ahead and I'll pass it over to Eric. And if we do have any last minute questions come through, we will make sure that we follow up with you. Um, but yeah, let me go ahead and send Eric over. OK, great. Thank you, Sandy, very informative. Thanks for your uh, perspectives on wireless and uh, hopefully you're, you're planting some seeds of thought for uh, where can I use wireless to enhance my business going forward. So we've got one last uh, little thing we wanna announce for signing up for the, uh, the webinar today, guys. Um, we offered some uh, coffee gift cards. So we have several winners. Uh, Doug Easter of Optex, Jeff Trimble of BranchServe, Brett Parkhill of the Baker Group, and uh, two of our um, compadres from Robert or from JCI, Robert Springle and Ron O'Reilly, both of JCI. So uh, thanks again, everybody. Happy Cinco de Mayo, and uh, please join us for our uh, upcoming editions in the the coming weeks with new subjects. Thanks again for joining Weekly Cup. <laughs>